Okay. How to create engaging presentation for your online classroom. Ready to start? Yes, everybody. Good. So, to start with, always we start with the warm up. How many words can you make from the letters in coffee? C O F F double E. Maybe you just said, for example, fee. That's a word. So just use these letters and make words. Let me see how many words you can make. Come on, type it. So I can check your spelling. Of. Yeah. yeah that's it. Of. Fee. Very good, Sarah. Hello, Blossom. Dio. <laughs> That was good. That was good. Come on, you have one minute. Oh, bravo. Okay, longer, longer words, more points, definitely. Lasso, uh, I just asked others to make words with the letters in coffee. Hello. Oh, yes. Uh, okay, let me try that. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. It's your first this morning, but good afternoon. <laughs> oh, okay. That's, that's nice. That's nice. I always said good morning, good afternoon, good evening, because I know people from Middle East, it's almost night. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. Okay, any other words? Come on, you have 15 seconds. No. Okay, done. You could say, you could say office. Yes. Face. Echo. Yeah. Yeah, I know. If you have time, definitely you could make it. Okay. What we're going to do today, we are going to discuss synchronous, asynchronous environment, ease with technology, flip classroom, collaborative project, platforms, and educational science for teaching online. Let's move on. Okay, what is the very first step when you want to teach online? Definitely your student should know the platform and feel comfortable. So you need a session before starting the course with your students to introduce all you have in that platform, what facilities or what each part, what is, I mean, what is used for. Or you make a video, okay? We make a clip and email to all of them so they know what is the platform and how can they use it. For example, even you have to explain, here is the chat box, this is the video part, and this is the button when you click, you have to double click to turn on your webcam. And these are breakout rooms. And when you want to ask me something, you just click on raising hands. And this is the pointer. This is the audio control icon. And um, here is the whiteboard. When you want to write anything on the whiteboard, you have to get permission. And here are the list of the students in the room and hands up icon, video control icon. So explain everything on the platform. A session before starting the course or make a video, introduction video and email to all of them. And when you want to start the class, just check with everybody if they have any questions. Even ask them, okay, now you want to ask me a question. What should you do? And then they press on, for example, hands up icon. Or you, you want to write something on the board. How can you do that? And then they click on it and start writing. Okay? So this is for the first session. 
Then for yourself, definitely you are going to write a lesson plan and you need to set smart goals. Do you know smart goals? By saying smart goal, what I mean, smart goals. Any ideas? Achievable goals, very good, Farah, excellent. Yes, that's right. What else? You can share your ideas with the group. Uh-huh, very good. Realistic, it should be real. Yes, good. Okay, you have 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. You need to consider their ability, so definitely should be based on their talents, ability, knowledge, even age, especially for young learners and adolescents. Thank you. Thank you very much. So here we can say specific, marked. So each letter resembles a word. For example, specific. This should be very clear. At the end of the session, the student will be able to do what? And measurable. So we can see how well they understand. Can they only understand it or can they use it? How well they can use it. And achievable, definitely as your friend said, achievable. Maybe it's beyond their knowledge or even ability. And realistic or relevant. We can also say relevant to the course and timely. So you set a goal for this session, but you need more time to practice and to teach. So it's not timely. Is that clear to everyone? Thank you, Bob. So number one, we have a session and we introduce the platform to the students. Number two, the aims should be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and realistic and timely. Three, another important Another important factor is usually engaging the students in online learning is not very easy because they can turn up their uh, webcam and also mute their microphone and you don't know if they're really listening to you or not. So what do you think? How can you make your students active in online classes? Or engage in process of their class? What do you think? How is it possible? Mm -hmm. Farah, do you have, can you elaborate what you mean by Uh, questions and answer. Very good, very good. Thank you. Interactive lesson, Farah, can you say that? And Bob said question and answer, class participation, involve them in the process. Good, very good. Feedback, views, exactly, thank you. 
we're asking them questions, even if it maybe it's hard for them that they talk. Maybe because of weak internet connection or any other reasons, but at least they type it for you for adults. Bravo, increase their participation. So it's the thing that teachers talk, you need to reduce teacher talking time mm -hmm, and increase students' talking time. So asking questions. Putting them in breakouts, putting them in break breakouts and give them tasks to do, then you monitor, you go to the breakouts and monitor them, they all work. Very good, very good, excellent. So while you are writing your lesson plan, you definitely, for online classes, you definitely need to write in detail how you engage your students. Okay? So even for your assignment, this is the very important part, how you engage your students during the session. We have two environments for teaching online, or nowadays for teaching, synchronous learning and asynchronous learning. Any ideas with the difference between synchronous and asynchronous? You know, if you don't have any ideas, you just type no. Yeah, Shock, please. Yeah, um, so we were talking about it the other day um, with Daniel, I think. If I remember correctly, synchronous is uh, when it's like live and the class is happening right now and the students are uh, uh, attending right now, whereas in synchronous, it could be like a recording of a class and it's not happening all at the same time when the class is being given. Thank you. Thank you very much. So this session, am I right now? Is it synchronous or asynchronous? Yeah, definitely. It is synchronous because we are all online at the same time. And I ask you questions and you answer back. But sometimes I ask you to study the modules, the material in modules and, and uh, do the assignment. You email the assignment to TESOL and get feedback. Okay, by studying material in modules, do you learn anything? Is it part of the process of your learning? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, of course. Who made these materials for you? Did you search for it or find it? Or no, it's already prepared and you just need in, oh, this is the second, the next question. Or you, it's all prepared for you. The material in modules that you have in Canvas. They're all preferred, bravo. Do you have to study it at a specific time, on a specific day, or any time, or how long it takes? It's up to you. Yes, self-paced and any time. That is asynchronous learning. So it's all prepared by the teacher or the trainer and it's all saved somewhere for you you have the link you can to check you can check it you can check it and study it and definitely you have to do something because the teacher needs to get feedback even tasks even assignments or doing exercise or coming to the class and explaining so you, the teacher will get the feedback but on self faith Anytime, maybe one day you study from morning to the evening and the other day you'll be very busy and you won't study. So it's up to you. That is asynchronous learning. It's not only for online classes. Neither is we have hybrid studying, even face-to-face -face classes. 
teachers send many things to for students to practice more or get prepared. So it's not only for online classes, even for your face to face classes, you can use this asynchronous learning approach. So it's clear to everyone. Good. Very good. What's more is how to create engaging classes. So, as you said, you can constantly ask the students views, questions, you ask questions, and you have brainstorming. Also, gamification helps a lot. You run educational games in the class and uh, try to know your audience and talk about their interests or ask about their interests or hobbies. They like to talk about these things. Also, get moving. You know, it's very hard for children, young learners, and even teenagers to sit at their table, at their laptop or desk uh, for an hour or for 90 minutes. It's hard for them. So we need to think about moving activities. You remember, we have different studying modes or style of studying. What are those? How people study something or learn something? Yes, some people need to move like kinesthetic. Some are visual and uh, other lingual is a method of teaching. We are talking with learning style or learning modes. So visual, auditory, kinesthetic, the ones that they need to act, they need to see the reality, touch it. And what else? And some people needs to read and write. Play is kinesthetic. Play is kind of like games. Read and write. So they need to study the text. They need to do worksheet. And some people interpersonal or intrapersonal. Some some people like to discuss it in pairs or in groups and talk about it. The other needs thinking time, so they need to think about it. So we give them thinking time to all the students to think by themselves and then put them in groups to discuss it and have some games for kinesthetic ones or prepare posters or videos for visual learners. Then listen to the audios and teacher also can explain it for auditory. Mm -hmm. So we consider all. Plus, young learners and young teenagers, it's hard to sit at the desk or at their laptop for an hour or 90 minutes. So moving, moving like TPR or moving activities. So TPR is one of them. You can ask them to turn on their uh, or active their webcam and you can see them or ask them them okay go and bring something or show me your flying or hug your teddy or bring something uh, green and they run and bring their frog and say this is green and say yes excellent or bring something pink and they go and bring their pink dress mm -hmm. Even for teenagers, you can ask them, or even adults, okay, I want you to stand up, go and look outside through the window for 30 seconds, and then come back and explain what did you see, or what can you see outside. I say, I can see buildings and a park, a big park in front of my apartment, and tall buildings. Mm -hmm. So they go and see them. Or I want you to go to the kitchen, open the fridge, look inside, 30 seconds, come back and tell me what do you have in your fridge? And say, okay, I have this, that, and that. So just 
at least once during the class move up activities. And by bringing different variety tasks and activities to class, you extend the learning window. So it's not only doing this exercise or writing answer to these questions. Different or variety of tasks. That increase the engagement of the students. Is that clear? Good. Now, how will you introduce the activity to your students, to your online students? This is a new activity. How will you introduce it? to your students. Back to what we talked, okay? Right now. Shabnan said, I prepared PDF, I observed brief introduction with visual images. Very good, Sarah, very good. And also, thank you, Shablam. Exactly. And then you ask for ICQ, yes? ICQ stands for? Do you remember CCQ? What does CCQ stands for? Uh -huh, very good, Cindy. Concept. Concept. Checking. Bravo. Q for questions. Very good. That was concept checking question. Just check with your students if they've got it, what you said in the class. Now, I see Q, so you know Q, Q for questions and C for checking. Checking what? Bravo, Bob, instructions. I see Q stands for instruction, checking, question. Exactly. So when you introduce the activity, mm -hmm, and then you prepare pictures, visual aids with directions or prepare samples. It depends to the level of the students or prepare samples and even give them a sample. OK, and you say how much time they have to do this activity and how they send you the answers or how we will check the answers or even you, you said, OK, you have um, for example, you have two days to email me the answers or write the answers in this link. And after two days, I will send you the uh, answer key. You can check yourself. So they know how can they check. Or even I will, uh, I will check it in the class. Mm -hmm. But this is the process. But the, from very beginning, after giving them the uh, instruction, you need to check with your students. For example, in the instruction, it said, write, uh, read the questions, answer to the questions in your notebook, and in your book, and you cannot do that for your friend. So you check, where are you going to write the answers, they say, in their notebook. Is it short answer or a long answer? It's a, it is a say short answer. Is that all? You only answer to the questions and say, no, we have to make some questions for our friends. So step by step, check with your students. Because they are doing it by themselves at home. So you want to sure, you want to be sure they've understood 
what they, what should they do? Clear? That's ICQ, instruction checking questions. Is that clear, everyone? What is ICQ? Okay, good. Thank you, Cindy. So, in online classes, definitely you need images, pictures. Yes, it has a big impact, especially big pictures for children, and they can remember it. It makes it vivid for them. So looking at this picture, what it, by looking at this picture, what it brings to your mind? What do you think? What's it about or what's happening? First of all, thank you, Farah. Very good, very good. Sparkles, birthdays, uh huh, see? Yeah, celebrations. That's good. That's good. Bravo, bravo. Thank you. Romance, really? Yes, it could be celebrations. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Why not? Good job. What's next? A rubric? So, Rubric is a scoring guide used to evaluate performance or project, especially adults and teenagers. So it's good they know how they assess or evaluate by their teacher. Mm -hmm. So you say you have a rubric for each one. Kim, you write Kim. Saturday, first session, the performance was very good. So five out of five. But Monday, writing needs working on punctuation. So at the end of the term or even midterm, you can, you can show them their rubric so they can see their improvement. And also, it's like a file for you and you, you, you know, which part you need to practice more with each student. Maybe sometimes you have to send different worksheets to different students based on their process of their learning, how well they learn. So they need to practice some parts more than the other parts for some students. One student needs more work on punctuation more than the other. So you, you have to send them extra worksheets, email them extra worksheets worksheets with him or her or even the other one still have problems and using present perfect so so sign some activities to practice present perfect how you record it in the, your rubric for each student you can later share it share it with your I mean, the next teacher now um, PowerPoints. You know, in your online classes, they need to see something and you need to highlight some important points of your lesson. So definitely, you need to prepare slides. PowerPoint is a very common and the easiest one. Do you know how to make PowerPoints for your class? So, yes, good. Bravo. So, we'll do a quick review because you need to make PowerPoint for your demo. So, here it is. Look on the left side, you have new slide. Open means open the old ones. And then you have save, save as, print, share, and this thing. So, you choose one platform, for example, you choose this one. And then you have the colors, you can change the colors and you click on create. Mm -hmm. This is the new one. See here, layout show you different form of the slide. So this is the, for example, the for the front page. And then for next one, you can even change it and say, no, I like this one more. Okay, you can change the slide. 
and then copy it. Mm -hmm. So here you write. And then you can add something. Here. Here you can see, I click on it, pictures. So you go, for example, here and attach any pictures. Even you can browse it from your computer or insert, you go to insert, here you have shapes or charts, so we can add charts right here like this diagram and these things you can add or shapes here. So for example, this one like this. Then you can change the color or any, any other pictures, browse it in your computer and find it. So, and design, if you like to change the background blue or even change the platform to something else here in design. Yeah, this is nice. Mm -hmm. What's next is how the slides go to the next part. So I, I, I have it here. So see like this, or it comes like that, or it splits, or random bars. So many things here are like that or peel off. Mm -hmm. So it goes to transition. Animation, so here. So it said, I want it comes first, how to teach writing. It comes first, then the picture comes next. So say one, two, one, two. When I put it like this, First, how to teach writing, then the picture. Okay, so it's in animation. Slideshow, so uh, some, when you are giving lecture, so we can put times from beginning, every two seconds, it changed the slides. So, or even you can record it and just send it to your students, email it to your students. Review part, like checking its spelling, start linking, we want to add linking or link notes. I don't think so, you need these parts mostly, but anyhow, view goes to how you want it looks like. So it's like this, or just all the slides here, all goes like that, so we can see all of them, or notes. But this is the normal one. So is it a reading view, note page review, slide order, or outline view, or normal form? So you got it? Then when you want to save, you save or save as well. You don't, you usually you don't print it, but you can share it with the students. Any questions? So see how it shows, this goes to an image. Any questions for how to make PowerPoint? Nope, okay, thank you. <laughs> now, what about flip classroom? Or flipping? Do you have any ideas? What if, I mean, you have the course book, 
But you know this reading for the next session, your students have no ideas about the topic. Like, um, like dish, dishes in Japan, they have no idea. Or it's about the history of Mongolia. I mean, this is a task in the reading, reading text. But your students, you know them, and you know they have no idea for the topic. So what will happen when your students come to the class, you put the topic on the board, they don't say anything. Or you ask them some questions, they won't, they won't say anything because they have no ideas. So you prepare short clip, very short clip, or you find some, not very difficult, not very difficult, but it's a short text and email it to them or send it to them before coming to the class. Just you students be prepared for the session. In this way, you help them be prepared for the session. That's what sleeping, okay? Sleeping. Or after your class, we have a session. If you have a session, then I ask you go to module, for example, module six, and do the second task. Mm -hmm. I send second task to you all. So that's sleeping. Okay. So either you prepare, you prepare your students for the class, or you send them practice or projects or exercises after the class. So up to next session, Actually, they're studying for that subject or the topic. This is flipping. So here is the connection between home and class. You know, nowadays in schools, even they use this flipping classroom. So in the class, the, the teacher don't have it, doesn't have enough time to practice everything. Then said, okay, everyone, I email it to you. So I want you to check your email this afternoon and do the activities. And next session, we're going to set them and we're going to review or I'll check it in the class. That's sleeping. It happens in your online classes. You have a session with your students. Then based on their questions, we have asynchronous material, okay? Asynchronous environment. But still you see, hey, my students needs more worksheet or needs to study something. And I said, okay, I want to share. I want to share a link with you guys. I want you to study for next session. That's flipping. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, of course. Hybrid or blended. Yeah, that's right. Sure. So, guys, it's clear. Flipped. Or flipping. Is that clear for you all? Good. Very good. Now, you can use different apps. Students like it. So, usually using technology is very, very, very essential nowadays. So, City Guide apps, this is a very useful app. Um, you know, here there's an activity that usually teachers ask the students, talk about your favorite place for holiday, talk about a favorite town, talk about your favorite city, talk about your, uh, explain your city. So it's always the same city that they live in. So by city app, city guide app, instead of, okay, I want you to find a city in North America. Go through your city app and study about different cities in North America and tell me which one do you like most and why. Or go to the, your city guide app and go to Africa this time. Mm -hmm. Find a city and tell us if it's good for our summer holiday. What can we do in that city? You can give them 100 different activities. And they know about different cities and they have to search. So they need to read. Okay, they need to read because there's a description for each city and they can study about it. So it's not only to increase their general knowledge, but also they have to read. So it's good too for their English. Then they come to the class 
that was reading skill, then they come to the class and talk about it. This good for their speaking as well. CT guide tabs. Next one is Kahoot. Let me share the link. I have the link here. Um, let me share it. Okay, give me a minute. Okay, I want to share my browser with you guys here. Okay, good. So here it is. Copy. Where's the chat box? There we go. So this one. Okay. So we can find it in the chat box. So this is Kahoot. They're all free. You don't have to pay anything. Then you sign up for free. You make games, you share worksheets or surveys. Then you just share the link with the students. So on their cell phone, they can answer or play the game all together. So this one is Kahoot. Also, are you familiar with Kahoot? Kahoot is very popular. Any of you have used it before? No, yes? No, okay. It's very easy, it's very easy. This one is Edmodo. Edmodo, so copy. So here's the sign up for a free account. You have an account. It's very good for asynchronous learning environment and also flipping because you can make a you can make a page in the name of the class or the session. And then you write the questions like this is teacher write the question and the students can answer and all the students can see what the other students have written. Just you share the link. But here is a tick that people can write their uh, answers, okay? Even you can put the name of the students on the front page, like this. So, Edmodo. This one, Bamboozle. It's game. So play games. Different grammar games. So like like this here said past tense. Mm -hmm. Past tense. So regular past tense or past simple tense, irregular past tense. So here comes and say play. Then uh, let's tic tac toe, get us started. Again, you share the link. Uh, this one is not, this one is not classic, is only three. Give me a minute. When is the classic one? Oh, this one is old, you have to pay. But the classic is free. So let's go for another. Yeah. So you go to this one. So here it says, Spongy, the cross with crab. After he was done with it, left or leave? So it said left. So they click on it. They click on the right answer. Game kit. Here you make a Enter V here. 
what was the question? Is this right stuff for teaching kids or any? No, any. It's not only for kids. These are all I said for all age groups. So game kids, again, you make games. Okay, this is free for upper intermediate, intermediate, or uh, even even elementary. They answer the question and they get coins. They get coins. See, like this. They get coins. The students love this a lot because they're all games. So they have to answer to the grammar part. They have to answer to the vocabulary part. You make the game yourself. This one, then gauge, it's a platform. Yeah, it's a platform like that. Okay. So for all age groups, For all age group, even for um, children or for adults, both. Instead of uh, PowerPoint, you can use Wingage. So it's, there are slides. This is free too, so sign up for free. There are different slides and then you can insert or write on it, then you share the slides with students. Scratch is for children and young teens. Mm -hmm. So here there are online stories and you can create the stories. So we say create the stories, they give you a page and you can put the different signs or a different pictures and write on it like this. These are the samples. These are the signs. You even use the samples or you create it by yourself. Games and even animations. This one is for children to learn English by British Council. This one, this site is also for teaching to teenagers. So it says read and write, listen and watch, speak and spell, print and make. This is, these are worksheets for very young learners to paint, fun and games. You can, you can find games and grammar and vocabulary. So see here you can see song, short stories, okay, reading practice, writing fair practice, speak and spell and games, jokes, tongue twister. They like tongue twister a lot. So here, and there's some different practice. You just go through it. It's for six to 12, young teens and young learners. But this one for teens. This site is for teens. So again, video stories, vocabulary, reading zones, speaking and Exams even, so there are different exams. There's sample speaking exam, listening exam, grammar and vocabulary exam. Many things, courses for all. And here, grammar for A1 to A2 or B1 to B2. So it is after uh, upper intermediate. Zite board, the virtual board. If you use a specific platform like, like Zoom, like WebEx or Big Blue Button or um, Skype, others have virtual boards. But if you teach on a Skype, there's no virtual board. So you want to share it, share the board with your students, or you want to use the board in the class. So you need virtual board. This is one whiteboard collaboration tool, zyteboard.com, and it's free. All the, I say all these sites are free. And here is another one, Miro. Miro also, Miro.com. So it's all, not only the board, look, not only a board, but even you can insert different slides or picture on it like this. 
so Miro. Also, Lino, Lino.com. This is good for flipping. You ask them some questions and let me share this with you guys. Okay. This is the link I make it for this class. Okay, please click on this link. Take one of these posted. Write your idea. My studying habit. Okay. And then you say post. Okay, talk about, write about your studying habit. Please click on it and take one of this posted up, right. Write about your studying habit and send it. Have you sent it? I, I, I haven't received anything. If you send it, let me know. So I check why I haven't received any. I have. So how come I don't have it? No, I haven't received any. Anyone else? Oops, why is stop sharing? No, share. Shock was, oh, shock, you, 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 shock, you have to stop sharing. Yeah, it's not all for you, it's for the previous term. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So would you please stop sharing, then I can share it. Yeah. Yeah, this is for the, Previous term. So I put here for yours. Okay, these are the students for previous. So I can, as a teacher, I can take it and, you know, put it somewhere else. Even you, you can do it to your notes. See? You can he here put the edit and edit and correct your students. Or say yes, the sticker has been removed. This one remove it. Or you can copy another one. Or send it to another person. This is how Lino works. You got it? Yes. Use it. It's very user friendly. Screencastify, you can make videos for your students. Where is your chat book? Yeah. If you want to make videos for your students, you can use a Screencastify. It works on Chrome. Screencastify. And this one for children, ESL games. So here you can find games. Let me share it. This is for young learners. This is a good site for young learners and young teens. So here you can find games, different topics. Bathroom, animals, comparative adjectives, nature, prepositions, colors, furniture, kitchen, and quizzes, and even videos mm -hmm. and worksheets. And they're all downloadable and printable for different levels. Quizlet. 
is a good sign to find quizzes. This one is quiz -led. Even if you want to make quizzes for your class, but it gives you ideas, how to use flashcards or how you can plan and different forms of worksheets and quizzes you can find here. Mm -hmm. There you choose your subject. For example, you say language and then which language you want. English, German, Latin, French. Say, for example, English. Then you hear the different activities. Okay. So let me get back to my PowerPoint. There we go. Okay, so we talk about all, I'll show it to you and then share the link. Uh, TED also, guys, TED, TED, it's very easy. You can, even maybe you have it on your cell phone. It's very good podcast for those students that they want to become fluent in talking and improve their listening. Different uh, accents and different topics. Are you familiar with TED Talks? Yes, mm -hmm. sure. But you know that it's for B from B two, maybe B one, but usually B two and advanced, not for lower levels. And I said about the whiteboards, Miro. Oh, this is Miro Works. Mm -hmm. This is Miro Works. This is a page that you can see on the board. What about different platform, Google Classroom? Just you share the links and then all the students come to the classroom. You can put them in breakouts. You can share your slide with them and they can uh, write their comments on the board. Zoom, I guess you're familiar with the Zoom, yes? Zoom is very popular in North America. And very easy to use. Webex also what we have here. Skype really works for private classes. And uh, because there's no board, virtual board. So that's why it's really good for private classes. But it's very easy to use. This is big blue button. Here you have here you have breakout rooms. And here you share your board, share the screen and add more slides or add whiteboard or into, and there's a virtual board you can share with these students. There's another one, Adobe Connect. Adobe Connect also used, yes. Well, the site that comes, you can download it and write different questions on it. The, it's an uh, increased engagement of the students. Write different questions or different topics on it and then access to the students to click. When they click, it starts going around, round, round, and stops. And say, so, oh, here's a question you have to answer, or this is a topic you, it's good to talk for next time, or this is the activity, or this is a project you have to do in your group. So it's fun. We'll decide that come. The click and it starts to spin. We talked about Lino. What about homework? What was homework? What do you think about homework? How could you give them homework and be sure they do it? Maybe they don't send it to you. So what would you do? How do you manage that? Any ideas? Tell them tell them where? I'm sorry. 
Oops. Go back. They cannot proceed to the next level unless the stone wheel can work. That's it. Very good. Very good, Farah. This is very good. Sometimes you can put lock on the material. Mm -hmm. So they have to do or they have to submit the first homework. Then you give them permission to, to open the other file. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Or you can give points instead of, okay, doing homework is 10 points or 15 points. Okay, this is another way. But just make the homework. I mean, do you remember those four C's? Those four C's we talk about characteristics of 21st century. The four C's. One, the first one was communication, then Communication, mm -hmm. collaboration, then creativity and critical thinking, critical thinking, okay? So we always consider these four. So even, it's not only for teaching, it's not only for teachers, also for students. So improve their creativity, improve their critical thinking, not just mechanical and robotic homework. Like you can ask them to record, I mean, everybody or have cell phone, or it's very easy for them to find a cell phone at home. Just record something and talk about that place or about that video. Uh, you can ask them, record a short video about your favorite room in your house. And then explain it. So why they're recording and saying, here's my bed. There is a picture above my bed there and my bed is next to the window. There is a lampshade here and they talk about there is a, and here is the closet. My jackets are in the closet. Or even they can record their favorite place or their favorite part, or record outside and explain what can you see, or write about it. Then they share it with the class. So it's fun, it's fun. And it works on their creativity. Okay, a screen classified. That you can introduce a screen classified to the students or to adults maybe or teenagers and say here you can upload your video and you can do some frame changes then put topics on it then share the link for with us so the other students and the teacher can go and see their video ed puzzle also works on video ed puzzle okay i said this esl uh, guys, I think I shared this one with you before, teach this. So if you want to find more worksheets or more tasks, you can check the site, teach this. It's fun and engaging activities you can find. There are games and worksheets to use in the classroom, or it gives you idea. It gives you idea for the material that you want to prepare for your classes. And it's free to download. It's free to download. Any site, because I know many of you are teachers, uh, any sites you use for your classes or to study or 
um, just search any educational site that you want to share with the others. Yes, Shabdan, please. Actually, it's not educational, but I always type what I want in Pinterest, for example, uh, worksheets or vocabulary list and something like that. Mm -hmm. Pinterest also is good for worksheets, yes. Even you can find worksheets for children. There are lots and lots of worksheets for children. Drawing, vocabulary, and grammar Pinterest, yes. Okay, I told you about this and quizzes. So let's re review. Before lesson, familiarize yourself with the material and activity and prepare any material or text you need. Then definitely in the class, you have to, you have a session before starting the course with your students or you send them the video. Young learners, definitely you need a session. And you have to explain to, to each. But for teenagers and adults, you can prepare a video and email it to them. And so how to use this platform. Then in the class, you do the process pre while post, how you prepare your students, how to put them in the context, we teach the keywords because it's synchronous. You are in the class, ask them questions, but constantly think about how to engage your students. Ask them questions, ask them about their ideas, share their, um, share their ideas or even write in the chat box, put them in the breakouts, money toward them. I mean, teacher can click on the breakouts and go to each room and listen to the students. Then set up different variety activities for all learning styles. It's not only for visual, also some activities for auditory, same as move up activity for kinesthetic ones on the interpersonal, intrapersonal. So give them thinking time to, to read something for scheming or scanning. So it's individual time, thinking time. I give you two or three minutes, but not very long because it's an online session it's not, and you don't have that control on your students. So it's like, okay, this is a very short paragraph. I want you to go through it in two minutes. Then write about the main idea in the chat box or write when you finish it. So they write in the chat box, then you put them in groups, they discuss it for people who likes to talk about it. So again, in your online classes, definitely working on communication. They should, uh, they should have this opportunity to talk together. So use those platforms that you can put them in breakouts. Or even there are a few students, like a few students, like four or five. So it's a, it's a conversation time. Like it's, it's, they're all on Skype. So you can, I mean, teacher only listen and take notes and put them in a group to talk about one topic. And you take notes. Later, you talk about your notes. Are any errors, correct them. Or any things you want to ask more, ask your questions. The last part, post, so that was why, why they are practicing. Post, that's a recap time. So you, you get the feedback from the students and check they've learned. So all goes for asynchronous environment, for, for synchronous environment, I'm sorry, for synchronous environment. For asynchronous approach and say, okay, here's the link. You share the link with your students. I want you to go and open the, the first document or folder one, do the activity, and then you explain the activity for your students. Even you can share your screen and tell them how to open the folder and how to answer. And then send me the answers in two days or until Sunday, timely, okay? Limited time. 
give them limited time. When, uh, when you're going to give them feedback in the class or you're going to email it to them or I check it in this folder and then you can come and check your assignment and see what would your score. So you have to explain to them how they get the feedback. Is it clear? Is everything clear to all of you? Some important hints, TTT should be less than STT. TTT stands for? Bravo, teacher talking time should be less than student talking time. Thank you. And start energetically when because they only see your face. Yes. So could you go back to the last slide and see the post I did? Yeah, sure. That was follow work. Okay. Is it okay? Sure. They only see your face or maybe your bit of your hands. But how you, and the, well, uh, the other thing that I want to tell you is uh, look through the webcam. Don't look round, just through your webcam. So they see your face, facial expressions is important. And your voice, ups and downs, and start energetically. With your young learners and students, you can start with the song. Play the song and say, okay, everybody, I want you to turn on your webcam and just sing together. And you yourself even jump up and down and sing together. So this is for children. For adults or uh, teenagers, you have good warm up. Okay, you have a very good warm up activity. Let them to think and change from their environment, outside environment to the class. If it's, uh, if it's, for example, different language, so maybe they speak English, but now they want to speak Arabic or they want to speak French or they want to speak Spanish or any other languages. So, but uh, with a good warm up, prepare them for the new language. It's a shift. So start energetically, move up activities and finish on a high tone. What I mean by on a high note? What do you think? Positive, bravo, positive. Any ideas how it happens? They have a good feeling. When the class is over and say, oh, I learned a lot today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Farad. That's a very good, that's a very good point. So they feel satisfied. That feedback or giving them homework and checking in the class and or you have a reflection. So they realize they've learned something today. Oh, I, I have new ideas now, or I learned this part. I know today I learned how to talk about my memories or how can I make a conversation in a restaurant? So they feel satisfied. Or even you can finish it especially with young learners and teens, you can finish it with a game or with a song. So it's a positive feeling. When they leave the class in online sessions, when they close the session and say, oh, wow, what a wonderful time you had. How positive it was. So think about how you start and how you end the class. Very crucial point. Very crucial point. 
So one thing would could be talking about their interests, like food, animal, jobs, sport, weather, art, not very routine things like work and school, something different, something that they like to talk about. If they uh, like movies, so, so talk about recent movies. Yeah. If they like reading books, talk about books or the genre that they like. Or even they like desserts, so talk about different places they can find their favorite ice cream cone, for example, or good restaurants, or good movie theaters, so their favorites. We never forget praise and encourage, encouraging. So when they say something and it was great and you clap and say bravo, well done, thank you. So just remember, you need to consider even small points, positive points that they say. If they make mistakes, just encourage them. Say, oh, okay. So what about this? Ask them easier questions, easier questions and lead them to the correct answer. In their writing, I always said, don't correct everything. Don't correct all the mistakes. This session, the focus is on grammar. Just correct in their writing, just correct the grammar points. Because when they receive their writing as full of mistakes, they're going to lose their self esteem and self confidence. So they won't write and say, oh, I'm, I'm really bad in writing. But when you encourage them, you only check, you only check the grammar point because the uh, target language of that session was grammar. So you only check the grammar point and ask them to rewrite it again. When they rewrite it, when they rewrite it, then you really praise them. So, wow, excellent. This time you really did well. Mm -hmm. So encouraging and praising. Feedback. We oh, this is a this is the um, there is a phrase they say. Give them sandwich feedback. What is sandwich feedback? It's almost lunch time in some part of the world actually, or dinner time in another part of the world. So this is a yummy picture. <laughs> okay. So what sandwich feedback? Yes, Shada. It's something uh, precise and to the point, I think. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Farah said the layer, the constructive criticism between the compliments. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Positive. Yes, very good, Cindy. So it's like a sandwich. You start with the positive point. Mm -hmm. Very good. I check your writing. Oh, the main idea, the topic sentence was wonderful. And you did your best to support it. But you know, still, still, there are some mistakes for punctuation part. You know, here, look, I underlined the punctuation part. Mm-hmm. Okay, I want but the question and the, especially the example part is beautiful. So positive, then tell them what should they do to improve their writing, and then again positive. <coughs> I'm sorry. In their speaking, you take notes. We don't correct everything, just, for example, using functions, specific function, making suggestion. You just, we just take notes for how to correct making suggestions. So you take notes when they finish and say, thank you very much. Very good questions. You ask very good questions. Mm -hmm. I, I like the body language, actually. It was really good. Now here, when you want to make suggestions, you should say less or what else? 
Uh huh. How about why not? Shall we? Very good. Very good. So I want you to practice more. I want you to practice more. So go back to your pair and practice how to make uh, suggestions. But stress and intonation was perfect. Thank you. So positive, constructive criticism, or and then positive. This is sandwich feedback. We are distant, but that doesn't mean we cannot be close. So see here in our class, we are in different parts of the world, but still we learn together. Do you think online classes, I mean, this new wave of education is gorgeous. Yes, it's awesome, don't you think? There's no boundaries. Yeah, there's no balance. I really like it. I really like it. From the time that I started to teach and have webinars online, I don't go to any face-to-face -face classes because I really enjoy it. Collaboration between teachers helps you in providing uh, material. So you need the bank bank of materials because um, you will have different classes for different levels so for each level you should search and find different material for teaching different subjects it's good to collaborate with the other teachers and share the materials that you find or even share your experience it really helps you it really helps you so you can start it from this course. So be in contact with your friends. And when you start your class, share your, uh, not only material, but also your experience. And even sometimes you need to ask some questions for your friend's experience. Okay, I have a student, she has problem in reading. I prepared these texts for her, but still she has problem. I have these exercises or these tasks, but still she's not, she's not very good in reading. So what do you suggest? Should, you can get to your friend's ideas. Thank you very much. Now it's the time for your questions. Do you have any questions? Yes, Shwag, please. Uh, yeah, the other day I was just uh, creating an online uh, conversation activity for our assignment. And I just wanted to include like a small clip from a movie just at the beginning of the lesson, just as a warm up and just because it's fun. Um, and I was looking at like different websites, but I couldn't find like I need.